of your mortgage sooner. Contact Donny Kabad at diabad at mortgagealliance.com Four pillars courtesy of David Mofat. Are you struggling with debt? Is it causing you stress? If so, reach out to David Mofat at Four Pillars. Four Pillars will work for you and not for creditors. Four Pillars will eliminate your debt as quickly as possible and reduce your stress. Call 902-482-9748. Dentistry for you. Are you a new immigrant? Do you know about kids' dental coverage under MSI program? Talk to us at Dentistry for You at 902-435-4848 or email info at dentistryforyou.life or visit them at 133 Baker Drive, Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. For your complete family dental care open six days a week, late evenings, and weekends, visit Dentistry for You. This is your YMCA Peace Medal Awardee for 2019. East Coast Filipino Portal welcomes you to your Friday live stream habit. This live stream is powered by You Find Social Wi Fi. For your social media marketing needs, contact Joey Moreno at 902-440-8304. Primerica, to efficiently and effectively utilize RESP, RRSP, and life insurance, contact Donny Kabad at 902-292-1368 with Primerica. Mortgage Alliance, if you would like to know how you can get that down payment for your first home or you would like to know better strategy to pay. Hello Kababayans, this is Jacqueline Moltery, East Coast Filipino Portal Correspondent from Cape Breton and today we're holding the Family Feud Canada here in our theater, resto and pub. Since Family Feud Canada was launched in 2019, the Samson family from Brodor, Cape Breton, was the third contestant from Nova Scotia. And we couldn't be more prouder because the viewing party was held in our establishment. That's for Cape Breton this week. This is Jacqueline Molto, your East Coast Filipino Portal Correspondent. Maraming salamat po.
Hi guys, this is your East Coast Filipino Portal correspondent, Catherine Rhodes. And today's Saturday. It's cloudy, windy, and stormy. Not stormy, but I mean snowy day. And we're currently on the highway going to Moncton, New Brunswick. And we are going to be watching Chalkoy's show tonight. I'm so excited! Okay, so we are already here at Moncton Casino and we are just parked right in front and you see that the, the Canadian Center is also over there. Um, we are just waiting. We arrived here early. Um, our check-in at a hotel is at 3 p.m. and we are just killing time here in front of the casino. I don't know why we're doing this. <laughs> But we had to leave early because uh, of the weather and the strong winds have been following us from Nova Scotia to here in Moncton, New Brunswick. So Nova Scotia is another province and New Brunswick is a different province. So. Hey guys, so we just got back here in the car and you're not going to believe this. So I was talking about going into the casino and kill some time there like for two hours and guess what we did? We played at the slot machine and we actually just won a jackpot prize. So I'm glad we did that and we didn't really expect that it was going to happen today. So we just got so lucky today. And now we are on our way to the hotel to check in. We are just so full. We had an early supper at this buffet and the food was really, really good. This is our room. At dito kami magstay for tonight. Nice, big room. Oh, I love the windows. Big windows. And there's a backyard view. It's nice, neat. Hi. <laughs> Hey guys, we are already here at Molson Canadian Center. The show is supposed to be starting in a few minutes, but we are still waiting outside. And you know what else is crazy? There's not just Filipino fans that are out here tonight, but also other ethnicities. So I saw a lot of them. Okay, so Joker is really one of the best comedian, stand-up comedian in this generation, and everybody's just excited to watch and see him. We're all ready to have fun and laugh out loud tonight. So we are back to our hotel and the show was over. Did you have fun? I did. I had a lot of fun. Really? You didn't like it? <laughs> I did. Well, personally, I liked it. Uh, it's just that we were not allowed to film anything while the show was happening. I just don't have any video to share with you guys. But I'm pretty sure that if you get to watch the show, you're going to have fun. You're gonna laugh out loud, and it happened to me multiple times at that show. You agree? I agree. <laughs> so, which part there was your favorite? I think that when I look back on the show, I can say that probably the funniest moment was when he's talking about his mom, and he's talking about how his mom used uh, what's the word? But the, I know, Tabo. I know it is the the dipper. Tabo. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was really funny. Um, so I've seen his uh, show, previous shows or tours on Netflix, and he actually brought some new, new stuff, new funny stuff there, 
like he's done making fun of his mom and his son and he's now making fun <laughs> of his relatives like the aunts and the uncles but it was really funny and mind you guys we celebrated our second year anniversary by watching the show Anyway, guys, it's time for me to call it a night. And this has been your East Coast Filipino Portal New Glasgow correspondent, Catherine Rhodes. Night. Good morning, everyone. We're here with Rafa Consanso, MLA for Clayton Park West. Um, Rafa, thank you very much for the opportunity that you had given us. Um, anything that you would like to say this 2020 for the, people, the Filipino community and all the communities that are watching us? First of all, Happy New Year, and I am so uh, delighted to see so many Filipinos have moved to this riding. Uh, I go to um, St. Benedict as my church, and there is a large community of Filipinos, and I have always loved um, the, the way Filipinos um, are integrated so easily in Nova Scotia or in Canada. They they come with a, a, you know they speak English. They're hardworking. They are very um, uh, community oriented and just wonderful people to have. So I, I'm delighted to have more. The more we have a Filipino, the happier I am. So I'm, I'm, I welcome you all to Clayton Park West, and I hope. Uh, and, and through you and through other, I have a couple of people that I've connected with, both Elizabeth, the, yeah, yeah. the counselor for, uh, oh no, the uh, vice uh, council, yeah, yeah. the yeah. vice council, and uh, a, a group of, um, um, of people who've actually helped me in a couple of events yes. that we've worked together, yeah. and they are truly wonderful community and, and part of the, the fabric of Clayton Park West. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. So, uh, could you share, for, Filipinos are not quite familiar with the term M MLA. So, what's your role as an MLA? Okay, um, I always, because I, I was an immigrant myself mm -hmm. and I came here and I knew nothing about government or yeah. how it is. So I totally understand how different it is here. And I always start by saying there's three levels of government. Yeah. There's the federal government, provincial government, and municipal government. Yes. And I am in the middle, the, uh, you know, the, the, provi the province. Um, the provincial government is responsible mainly for um, health, yeah. education, community services, and many others, but uh, and education. Yes. So any issues you have with those in, in relation to health, to education, to community services, or other, you know, certainly immigration, but immigration is generally a federal jurisdiction. Oh, okay. So, but we, we do have certain programs that are specific to Nova mm -hmm. Scotia where we nominate people, oh. or we help nominate people, we give uh, so there is some help with the immigration as yeah. well, but normally most of the questions that we get in regards to immigration, we forward to yeah. the MP. An mm -hmm. MP is a member of parliament, which is the federal uh, for this riding, and that yeah. is Jeff Pregan, uh, the wonderful uh, yeah. um, MP who has been with us for, I don't know, 17 years. Absolutely. He's wonderful. Yeah, That's he right. is. Uh, is there anything that you would like to share with us in terms of why people should be moving to Nova Scotia? There are a lot of uh, a lot of our followers are from outside Nova Scotia. They are looking at moving here to to Canada. Why should people move to Nova Scotia? Why should people move to Clayton Park West? It's a lovely question, and I, I couldn't be happier to to answer that question, especially now. I've been here since 1984, yeah. and there has been more. Um, development and, and economy, the, our economy has done so well in the last five, six years yeah. that Halifax is just beginning. So there is no reason why Halifax wouldn't be uh, the new Toronto, the new Vancouver. Yeah. And, and we are at the bottom. So anybody who comes now, yeah. it's the perfect time. Absolutely. Perfect yeah. time to open businesses. We have a, a very high educated population because Absolutely. we have 12 yeah. universities in Nova oh, Scotia. Wow. One of the highest educated population in Canada and you know especially in Halifax and outside yeah. and the rest of Nova Scotia we also have so much here uh, Clayton Park West is 10 minutes away from downtown we have the best uh, re residential choices we yeah. have housing uh, 
I have over 110 apartment buildings. Nice. They're all, sh you know, six and eight floors, which is yeah. wonderful. But we have different levels of, uh, 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 you know, uh, rents that they can have yeah. or condo to buy. Yes. We offer everything for housing. We have so many facilities here. We have the best recreation center in, in Halifax, the yeah. Canada Game Center. Canada we Game have center, yeah. a beautiful library. We have the best soccer fields, indoor and the outdoor. Demo, right? We have a theater, the Bella Rose. Bella we have uh, three, in, in my little riding, one of the smallest riding in, in, in size, uh, sorry, in, in land mass, but yeah. one of the most diverse and the most um, populated but it, with a beautiful community sense. We have yes. a, uh, it, it really, a lot of people move and choose the schools that we have because of the diversity. Yes. I and agree. I, there is nothing makes me happier than that, truly. Yeah. And the, the, the way the people, the, uh, the Canadians of welcoming uh, yes. The diversity here is amazing. It's really wonderful. We have businesses that are starting up here everywhere. We have the large shopping area mm. and the smaller mom and papa sh uh, shops in, yes. in the different plazas. So you have an opportunity. Uh, we have um, a little lake here yeah. with um, a club, uh, a swimming and uh, paddling. Uh, and they've won nationals. And, oh, and which one's that? That's Masqua Aquatic Club, oh, okay. which is just uh, off the Kearney Lake. Oh, okay. We also have heritage here. Uh, we have the Rockingham Society, and I actually put it in my Christmas card yeah. this year. We have the uh, the Rotonda, which is uh, just down the street on the Bedford Highway. So there's so much to learn about Clayton Park West and what's available. We have the largest urban um, wilderness. Wow. which we haven't been able to access but yeah. we're working on getting trails made so there is the the actual city plus yeah. there is wilderness and uh, nature very yeah. close by Fair and you're close to the city uh, there is a, a feeling of um, excitement the youth are coming back yeah well, you know, our immigration uh, We've always had people who immigrated in the past 20 years, mm -hmm. but they came, they stayed a little bit, and they went to the big city. Yeah. It has stopped. Yeah. A lot. It's actually we're getting a lot of back immigration from mm -hmm. the other provinces, especially if they have family here. They're all coming back and able either to open a business, to find jobs. Yeah. Our economy is done incredible in the last yeah. five years, and I truly be believe that it's just at the beginning. Yeah. So there is plenty of room for it to go up. This is the time for people to immigrate to Nova Scotia. It yeah. Truly is, wow. and, um, and and the, we have um, a government that's supporting business in any way and yeah. uh, possible to help them thrive here. Yeah, especially newcomers. Awesome. Just to follow up on the statement you said that uh, the youth that went out of the province are coming back. Is there any specific reason why the people were coming back to, to Nova Scotia after leaving uh, Because Halifax? there are jobs, yeah. literally. We're finally, and everybody I speak to, whether it's mm -hmm. accountant, lawyers, this, they are so busy and they're almost short of staff. That's right? a great problem, we're, right? That's right. <laughs> We've never had that. We had a lot of unemployment and people couldn't find jobs. Now the opposite. So people come when there are jobs. Yeah. When the economy is doing well, and that's really what the Premier has focused on. Absolutely, is yeah. uh, in diversifying our export, uh, bringing business and investors here. True. And we have plenty to offer, mm -hmm. truly. Okay. And we just scratch the surface. So yeah. this can go much bigger and much better. Um, and with increase of population, Absolutely. increase demand, yes. right, for every business. Yeah. So we we should be very proud and encourage people to come Absolutely. because there is room for growth. Yeah, for that's them. what we, uh, with yeah. East Coast Filipino Portal, that's yeah. what we do. We're encouraging uh, people who are planning on moving to, to Canada to move to uh, East Coast, Halifax, and Clayton Park, Park West. Yes. It's one of the, the, the best locations, right? We have what is the most important is the educated population. 
We have so many students that come from other provinces, love it here, yeah. and there is an opportunity, and we want people international. We one of the best programs that uh, our immig um, local immigration department, yeah. uh, uh, our minister Lina Diab introduced six or seven years ago before I was even in, yeah. uh, involved in politics and said, wow, this is an amazing thing. We have students who come to study here. Mm -hmm. They get, you know, their education, and they get accustomed, you know, uh, accustomed to the weather, to yeah. the to the uh, to the way of life here. Yeah. And then they can stay. They yeah. can, up, you know, work for a year and apply for for their uh, PR here. Yes. This was amazing. So that we keep the highly educated yeah. and the the youth yeah. because our population had become very. Um, you know, too many seniors at a certain yeah, point, sure. and we needed the new uh, people to actually pay taxes, yes. to start businesses, to yeah. revive, and it's yeah. there. It's happening. It's happening in a large numbers. The the last numbers, if I'm if I'm correct, yeah. we had six thousand immigrants last year. Wow. Six, no, maybe seven. I should know the the numbers, mm -hmm. and really the majority of them are either skilled workers or the economy. Um, they come because there is jobs. Yeah. That, you know, we don't bring people just to come, but yes. if there is jobs for them, if that's the field that is, um, you know, we need people in that industry, yeah. then they're allowed to come. And it's amazing. It's working yes. perfectly. This is how immigration should work. I also have always said that Canada has the best immigration system. Yeah. We know how to do immigration. And people are not segregated. We are integrated. We work very yeah. hard at doing that and connecting people together. Yes. We're all Canadians. And yeah. we become even proud. Uh, you know, we have this sense of pride of being that new Canadian, right? Yeah. It's yeah. just uh, I, I, we. I arrived here in '84. I don't. I think it took me less than a year, and I felt oh, wow. this is home. Yeah. It just, it just people make you feel at home. Yes. Which is wonderful. I completely agree because <laughs> we we have our own culture. Yes. But we also would like to know, and we come, we we try to integrate ourselves into the community. Mm -hmm. We learn the culture of Canadians and also uh, the cultures of the immigrants are also being. Uh, open up and and in, in riches. And, yes. What it is is the Canadians. We all come here because of the things that we hear about Canada. Canada is safe. Canada is clean. Canada is organized. Canada has um, uh, human rights. Canada has you know all the positive things that we miss in our own country. So we come for it, and we want to learn that, right? Yes. And it's nothing more beautiful than to become part of that. Yes. Right? And then we. The ones who've been here 30, 40 years can pass it on Absolutely, and pass yeah. on what we've enjoyed. I, yes. I am blessed to have uh, come here as a student, uh, lived the true, and I've had nothing but positive to say about my life here, Absolutely. especially yeah. as a woman, and have worked with immigrants for the last 20 years as a medical interpreter. Yeah and took every opportunity to educate the mothers to open the doors for their daughters. Yeah. Because there is so much for girls here. Yeah. And I was blessed that God gave me two girls, and I say wow. it loud, that I yeah. raised them the Canadian way. That's awesome. They, ha they were in, uh, in uh, competitive soccer, competitive oh, nice. dance, and they're involved, and they, they can make every decision they want on their own. There is nobody to tell them this, you can't do this. No, you can't do this because you're a girl. Everything that's available for a boy is yeah. available for a girl here, yeah. and that's huge. It to is. me, it's a big deal for women. And look at me—I never thought I'd be in MLA, oh, but well. here, <laughs> I'm an yeah. Iraqi girl who is in MLA in Nova Scotia. Yeah. This speaks a lot to the people of Nova Scotia. Yeah. What made you decide to go uh, and become uh, an MLA and be involved in in politics? Very good question. I had zero knowledge of politics, yeah. especially in my country. Mm -hmm. Politics is considered very taboo, negative. I'm a Christian from yeah. Iraq, a minority, so you kept away from politics. Mm -hmm. So literally, I knew nothing until, I think, uh, I would say 15 or 16 years ago when Chrétien was yeah. our prime minister, 
and Bush was going to bomb Iraq. Oh. That's when my interest started, because Christian stood up to Bush and said, no, we're not yeah. going to go. So I said, wow, who are they? They're making the right decision. How can I help them? Yeah. And uh, my husband said, well, uh, Jeff, there is an election coming up. Jeff Regan's, uh, sorry, the uh, federal election was coming up. If you yeah. can help. I was terrified because I didn't know what constituent meant, riding yeah. meant. Yeah. Even the terminology was dif uh, difficult and different to me. But I delivered flyers. Then I knocked on doors. And I yeah. enjoyed the democracy that we did not grow up with. Right? Yeah. So I loved it. And I was volunteering for 12 or 13 years, both for Jeff and Diana. I love yeah. Diana. She was an amazing woman who has an, was an MLA here for many years. Yeah. So I worked for three elections for Jeff, and I think two or three for Diana as well. Yeah. And I learned, and it was yeah. them who came and asked me to run. Yeah. You know, oh. So they, they they taught me everything, and I hope I can be like them and teach others, and hopefully I can teach as many um, uh, immigrants about politics, about the positive of politics, yes. because we come with a, a different misconception yes. about politics here, yeah. and we need to educate people about yeah. how different it is here, yeah. and how important that our voice is heard. Yeah. And I have tried, at least with my board, to bring one person from each community to sit on the board, as many awesome. as I can. Yeah, that's awesome. You were mentioning about uh, your role as an interpreter. How did it help you uh, be able to connect with your community and your constituents? It, it, it really was a blessing because I could see all the social um, network that we have, all the social programs that we have, because I would go with the with the uh, refugees or the new immigrants mm -hmm. to hospitals, to um, community services, to other departments of the government, yeah. and couldn't say enough about how much is available yeah. for newcomers here, truly. And we've improved it over the years. When I came in the 80s, there was half of what there is now. Yeah. So there's a lot of things available. So I felt blessed that I I have gathered all that knowledge of what happens in the government departments mm -hmm. and what's available for immigrants and I can tell them yes. right and this you know you you have all these things you do not have to worry here in our countries it's the family if you don't yes. have family support you're in trouble here whether you you're blessed to have family support but on top of it there is always a, a a, a social network that would lift you up if you yeah. lose your job if you have an illness if you have there is things that are put together that helps you to get over that uh, hump in your uh, that step in your life and and do better yes right and, and it's just wonderful truly. Yeah. So, so interpreting allowed me to see all these services yes and at the same time I would see from their eyes from yeah. the immigrants eyes of how grateful they are for things that I explain uh, sometimes I couldn't find the word because I don't remember having it in my country, so I would explain mm -hmm. what it is yes. because it didn't exist, these social services that we have. So I tell them, you are, you are lucky, you've won the lottery to come to Canada yeah. because we do have so much to offer for yeah. new immigrants. That's we really amazing. Do. And then you were, you were also a minister, ministerial assistant for the Minister of Immigration um, and also you're an advocate for, for kids and women. So what are the challenges that you've seen and what are the ways that uh, we could address those challenges as a community, as an individual, as a community, and uh, working alongside the government? So, uh, to me, it's so important that we get everybody at the same level. You know, it doesn't matter which country you're from, you're yeah. now the new Canadian, and we work together as a group. Yes. Um, you know, I, there's nothing makes me happier than when I have my uh, MLA barbecue, it's, uh, the friends of Clayton Park and the MLA. Yeah. And the number of people from different uh, countries, probably 30, 40 languages, oh, wow. uh, in Clayton Park West, yeah. they come to this event together and everybody's talking to each other. This is incredible. This is United Nations at its best, yes. truly. Yeah. And it is so lovely. And I, my job is to make sure that every community feels welcome and integrated. Yes. And this is the most important thing for our immigration system is not to isolate people mm -hmm. and find ways of integrating them and to learn the Canadian system yes. and become part of the fabric of this country. We enrich. Yeah. 
every culture that comes here brings something with it, whether it's food, whether it's a uh, way of doing things. This is a richness. Mm -hmm. I, I truly believe that diversity brings so much richness. So I say I have one of the most diverse and one of the richest uh, yeah. ridings because of the different yeah. uh, people from different immigration. And, and we work very hard in yeah. the Department of uh, Immigration mm -hmm. with the settlement, with uh, issues that re you know require. But what we're bringing is the highly educated and skilled workers. Yes. And they love it here. They yeah. really, truly love it. We have beautiful schools in this riding. We have uh, a health center that's coming up in, in Clayton Park okay. West in Bears Lake. Yeah. So we have so many uh, facilities here for them to move to, and I welcome them with, with open hands. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's amazing. And then there, is there any event that they could see you, they could attend in the upcoming, uh, any Thank upcoming you. event I'm that so you would have? <laughs> so glad. So uh, there is an event in, uh, on Heritage Day, actually, the MLA before me, she asked for this day to be uh, a family day. Okay. And it's uh, February 18th. Oh, sorry. This February year, is, last year it was the 18th. That's yeah. right. It's February 17th. It's Heritage Day, mm -hmm. and we're going to have an uh, like an open house at the Canada Game Center okay. with face painting, games, and and food and different things. So, and it's free of charge. Oh, nice. Anybody can come. So please tell the <laughs> yeah, Filipino community to come. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, from one to, one to three, but I believe the Canada Game Center has it open all day oh, wow. as well. Yeah. So, just if I can ask the Filipino community one thing uh, is to follow me on Facebook because I put a lot of information of what's happening and what's available it's so hard for me to send things by mail yeah uh, it's very expensive true, yeah. uh, so the easiest way to reach people is via uh, Facebook it's or email yeah. so if, if they don't mind go on my Facebook and, and put their emails and I will send them everything that's happening we're also looking to do a seniors event okay in, in, between now and April, uh, we will hopefully do another business event. Uh, we have so many business startups here in Clayton Park yeah. West, and we're actually having a, a Chamber of Commerce for Clayton Park starting as well. Oh, nice. So I want to connect people who have business ideas. Yes. I want to be their advocate to find them. And we, what we did last, we actually held it here yeah. upstairs. Yeah. And we all the government departments that help businesses oh, nice. to to what available to open yeah. your own business yeah. uh, and and what you need. So I will do another session of that yeah. as well. We would love to to be involved in there, especially I, for people who want to start their businesses. So uh, I know there are a lot of Filipinos who would like to start their own business, but they're not quite familiar with the whole process of when to start, how to start, and how to end, and what are the resources that they would need. Hundred percent. And I, if I say, if I may say one thing, my husband is also in, in, in you know, he, he has a large, uh, he's a lawyer, and he deals mm -hmm. with businesses. And the one thing that we find very difficult for people when they open business, they don't know how to deal with employees. Yes. The Canadian system has rules and regulations, yes. and to educate anybody who opens a business yes. on how to deal with employ employees yes. and HR and the rights of an employer. So yeah. I'm hoping to find this information and connect the, the new businesses that are opened so they can have this uh, help yeah. with how to deal with employees. Absolutely. Is there any other information that you would like to share about Clayton Park West? Yes, sorry. I, we ha I have a list of things that are happening, but uh, there is a new organization called Friends of Blue Mountain Birch Cove. Okay. We have 12 lakes and 33,000 acres. I, uh, mm -hmm. I Don't quote me on the exact size. One yeah. of the largest area right here at Bayers Lake behind oh, us. Nice. And this is spectacular, a really spectacular thing to have in an urban setting. Yes. And this group is trying to buy the land all around the wilderness area so that we can have trails and people can use oh, wow. it. So I'm that association so you can receive information about it. Friends, Blue Mountain, Birch Cove yeah. Lakes. Uh, uh, it's, we have a link to them on my website. Yeah. So I would love to encourage, they, their aim is to have a thousand members. I think there are six or something like now. this yeah so it's wonderful and let's increase it so we all can enjoy nature and 
nature is beautiful to yes. have all these buildings we have everything we have the yes. uh, apartment buildings but nature at the same time mm -hmm. right this is beautiful yeah, we have a great view of, uh, of the, uh, of the bay. Yeah. The other thing that I really want everybody to help me with mm -hmm. is I have noticed that we have a lot of garbage in the summer. We see a lot. So yeah. uh, we, I have started this litter prevention committee and trying to get the community to help me. And we did six or seven cleanups last summer. Oh, okay. yeah. Three with the schools and three with community members. One with one was with the associate we want to have not only the most diverse yeah the most um, uh, highly populated but one of the cleanest ridings so okay. i hope the community helps me with that uh, one of the reasons we came to canada is because canada clean is so yes. beautiful we need to keep it that way yes and just litter that is flowing around that we all just ed through education yeah we hope to get there. yeah okay? and then would people be able to see for those events yes. and your Facebook That's live stream. Please, from Facebook, everything right? is on my Facebook. I post, I ask. Please follow me on Facebook. I would, it would make me so happy that my information is reaching as many people as possible. Yes, yes. awesome. Uh, so for us newcomers or people who are in the community, what are the things that we could contribute for us to be able to grow our own communities? Well, the Philip actually that was the one. The Filipino community joined me in one of the cleanups in April. Yeah. So you know they they're the first to join you in anything uh, that there is in the community, and I love that. And I know they're doing other things as well to raise money for charity. I think yeah, I saw yeah. as well. So uh, just connect with us through mm -hmm. Facebook, through my amazing assistant Zena uh, yeah. at the office, and we will be happy to tell you what's happening here and we will incur and if you have other ideas that you want to bring to me yes please come and just coffee and conversation once a month yeah drop in tell me what your idea is and i'm more than happy to help you with yeah that. so to, to every sure. every every first monday of the month you yeah. have a meet and greet with your constituents right so where is the location just for people to know sure uh, my office is on the second floor of the bedford basin market and here it is uh, i'm sitting in the cafe at yeah. the uh, bedford basin market so you can come anytime they have lovely coffee and, and food and anything else but uh, I, I hold my meetings the first monday normally in the morning but if i have meeting if i have a a meeting downtown then we hold it in the afternoon mm -hmm. but usually it's on my Facebook if we change the time or the date it's always on my Facebook yeah um, so I would love to meet to, to sh bring me your ideas and I will be able to share it with uh, sometimes I think there's 3,000 people that follow my Facebook yeah so it'd be wonderful to to share your ideas yeah. on it as well if you have an event that you want the public to come to, let us know about it. Absolutely, please. yeah. And we will help, you know, promote it for you. Yeah, we're excited to have you and invite you to uh, this year's Filipino Heritage Celebration in June. We're going to have another one. We had one last year, and it was a uh, we would consider a successful event. And we're looking forward for this year. And uh, your support will be amazing for I the success. Would, I would truly love that. So thank uh, you. And we will put it in our calendar. Give us the date so absolutely. that we don't book anything else. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then the last question I would have sure. is, um, how how is your role as an MLA, a minister of the Ministry's Assembly, uh, impact your constituents? Okay, so part of what I do, I sit on seven different committees. Mm -hmm. There is such knowledge that you get from those committees. It's incredible. So I get to hear about what happens in all the government departments, and I can bring this information to my constituents. Yes. I am the link between any issues they have mm -hmm. or um, with, with these government departments and the constituents. So if they have any problems, any issues, any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. If I don't have the answer, yeah. I will connect them to the right people within the government mm -hmm. who can help them. So please don't hesitate to contact our office, please. Awesome. So any last words for uh, the, the viewers that we have? Well, uh, I, we had a wonderful 2019, but I'm really looking forward to 2020 because I see the excitement and, and the, um, the beauty of this province and how well it's doing. 
and Clayton Park West uh, is going to be even richer with, with yeah. the new immigrants. I know we have issues because so many people want wonderful issues to deal with. These are positive and yeah. we are working on solving them to bringing other uh, you know, uh, schools here or other things to, to, to make sure that we solve those minor issues. Yeah. But Clayton Park West, is we have so many new buildings being mm -hmm. developed. Rockingham South is a whole new development, and there may be another one uh, just at the Mount as well. Yeah. So there's plenty of places to live and shopping and services. Yeah. Any yeah. services, they're all within walking distance. So please, uh, I welcome you to Clayton Park West anytime. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Minister Rafa. Uh, it's a great honor for us to have you in East Coast Filipino Porto. I, I thank you for this opportunity and Happy New Year to everyone. This is your YMCA Peace Medal Awardee for 2019. East Coast Filipino Portal welcomes you to your Friday live stream habit. This live stream. This is your YMCA Peace Medal Awardee for 2019. East Coast Filipino Portal welcomes you to your Friday live stream habit. This live stream is powered by you find social Wi-Fi. For your social media marketing needs, contact Joey Moreno at 902-440-8304. Prime.